All right, this is Lunch in the Garden one more time. I'm privileged to have the chairman of the Church of Pentecost visiting the United States, and he is in the studios with us today. We're going to look at a few areas of transforming a nation, a little bit about his life and then the church in general. Welcome to uh, COP US Radio and Pen TV as well. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. It's been a long time. Everybody has been waiting for you and finally you, you came in. Let's go back. Um, there was joy and celebration when you were elected as the chairman. How did you take it when the votes came in? I just to the glory of God, I was also excited that God has answered the prayers of his people. And uh, because churches need leadership, and sometimes you see churches uh, fighting over uh, leadership, and when it comes to election, uh, things are not as expected, even though they are supposed to be Christians. So for ours, it was that smooth and peaceful, and we give God a glory. Were you expected to win? Uh, <laughs> it's that to me, it's not a matter of winning. Uh, but because God has spoken to me many years ago, like I said, about 20 years ago, uh, I knew that if I have to be presented, uh, it, will, it will be in God's will. And for that matter, I was expecting that God will cause his people to vote massively for me if he desires for me to For you to come in and yeah. then bring what he has um, embedded in your spirit you to yeah. the forefront. Let's look at the role of mentorship in leadership. I I remember speaking with the Apostle Ogina. He talked a little bit about mentorship and mentoring you on a secret and I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. How does mentorship role plays in a person's life climb into the level of leadership? Yeah, you see, um, leaders are concerned about the future of the church and mentorship is key if you have to bring up somebody that you can trust that at least you are sure that you are living the scene the future will not be bleak mm. then you have to consciously do some mentoring uh, just to make sure that you are secured <laughs> <laughs> because you're, you're your success, success is your success. Wow. And so mentorship becomes very key uh, in trying to raise up leaders. Um, I I didn't know he was mentoring, mentoring. you uh, because in our system, who becomes the chairman is left is, is unknown because mm. uh, the leader will not tell you that I want you to become the next chairman. No, and so he does that. Uh, he, he determines that he, he will do that. <laughs> and so it was later on that I also saw that there were certain things that he asked me to do. And to him, it was part of what he was, uh, uh, the, I mean, the mentoring. But I can say that my joining the executive council was the actual place where I was mentored. Okay. There you see the leader sit in the chair. You see more than time for five years. You learn from the way he does his things that you also understand the church very well. well. Yeah, because of the issues that come and all that. So that place was a very good uh, entry point. Uh, and I thought that bringing me in there, he had that mind that he wants to mentor this uh, person. 2023, this new vision that you're coming up with, that we have to use it to transform and change nation. Mm -hmm. When did you conceive this? 2013. 2013? Yes. Wow. I was sent to Dominican Republic. Uh, I had to be there for almost two months. And one afternoon, while I was seated quietly, uh, this thought started coming into my spirit. And so I wrote many things down. And then uh, I also found out that I got a bit frustrated mm. about the fact that Christianity is not having an impact on the on nations. Yeah, well. on the nations. And so the eve of the day of the election, I actually wrote this thing down. But it was in 2013 that I conceived the idea that no, in Christianity should have effect on the land. 
And by the eve of the image in the, the middle of the night, it was as if someone was speaking to me. To you, uh, So I had to wake up in the night and actually write my acceptance speech. Even though, <laughs> <laughs> even though That's awesome. Yeah, nobody has told me that you are going to be the next chairman. That's a true leadership yeah, there. I wrote the acceptance speech. Wow. Mm. Wow. So when people were look, uh, listening to that, the people were asking whether it was ex tempo or written, right? It was both. I had written it, but because as uh, I did it, uh, let's say, in the middle of the night, I had dwelt on it, and my spirit was in it. So it was as if it was ex tempo. But I had written it on a piece of paper, yeah. and I kept flipping it. <laughs> now it has come to light. You brought about missions, and one of the questions I want to ask you, let's look at the role of the church playing in supporting the missionaries. I, I have a friend, one of our pastor friends in Kenya, uh, Pastor Beckham, uh, who were exchanging conversation, and he texted me with a picture, one of his eyes, he's, um, he's into surgery, the wife has broken the leg. What is the support system that a church has for missionaries on the field? Um, we, we try our best to support them. You can imagine a church from Ghana mm. trying to send missionaries. We may not do um, that much, but at least we we do what we can. We can. Yeah, we do what we can. And so in this case, for one, I think that we are attending to the wife now. The wife uh, comes home to Ghana uh, for medication. And once we know that there's a need and we can support, we support because we have sent it there. And so we do, we do. Uh, do help us. Uh, yeah. The role of the clergy in transforming the nation. One of the major roles on your heart, what will you expect the clergy to be doing in transforming the nation? Is to equip the saints. So what kind of tools? Some, some people say, you give us the, the, the keys and what the doors, now so as the doors, equip the saints. Give us some of the typical examples that a clergy should use in equipping the saints and transforming the nation. The Bible. One. Yeah, number one, two. It is not one as if there are others. Mm. The Bible is it's the key. two. You add prayer and then other matters. Um, because so we have to equip the saints for the work of the ministry mm. and so once you use the bible scripture to equip them but because they are going to work in a certain context you need other things to to add to it and so if you have to uh, like paul was saying that train the slaves uh, the young men uh, the young men the old ladies so depending on who you are training you need other things to support the work but you really need to use the word, the word. yeah, the word prayer and other matters, leadership, those into politics. You have to know how to <laughs> <laughs> talk to them so they will be effective in their sphere. But the, the key is the word. The word. Yeah. Let's look at prison ministry. Personally, now you're picking up prison ministries and you're showing videos and it's touching now. Why now that the church wants to go into to prison ministries in winning souls? Um, it is because this is the time that um, God wants us to actually concentrate more on the prison ministries. It is coming out of the, the transforming society agenda. Uh, because you want to transform society, you cannot just see people congested in prison, in prison and you think that you are transforming society. So now we want to lend a hand yeah, to decongest the prisons and then find a strategy of making them better. Uh, at prison, so that when they come out, they'll be uh, they'll be responsible, self sustaining, yeah, to the citizens, and then be able to fit into society. Mm. So that is not the only avenue of win winning souls. But we think that we need to help the government uh, at least to decongest the prison, the prison system, and then also make sure that the souls there uh, they find crime before they, uh, the prisons. So, okay, five years from today. Mm -hmm. What should the church expect from you, your leadership, and then vice versa? What do we also want the church to, to see the church growing in? Yeah, the church should expect that through our leadership, the church of God is now having impact on the society. And I'm praying that this Pentecost agenda will affect the churches. And then when they all come on board, 
they're possessing the nation of transforming society agenda will be quick and fast. And I'm also praying that by the close of these five years, at least church would have known that just establishing a church is not is not a means to an end, but it is righteousness that will transform nation. So that Christians in in Ghana and all in the diaspora we we'll have to know that we don't just do church for doing this. It's not about the money and all that. Mm -hmm. But God has placed the church there as an agent of transformation. transformation. Yeah. I also want to see uh, uh, us as a church at of Pentecost being able to partner with the government to ease the government of many um, burdens like building uh, police stations, okay. uh, decongesting the prisons, finding portable water for people. Uh, in the deprived communities. I'll be glad to see these things happen. Will the church be going into hospital buildings? Yeah, we are doing some cheap compounds okay. uh, for the just a community type of uh, hospital. And we also want to expand our own hospital, the Pentecost Hospital. Okay. We want to give it a facelift, try mm -hmm. to upgrade it to the first class hospital. The chairman went around the United States visiting the churches, meeting with pastors and their wives and church officers. So I want to take his view on the thaw that he went through and then how we see the church in the United States. Yeah, after the tour, I realized that I didn't make a mistake because originally uh, I had slated to come here in October. Uh, but upon reflection, I thought that uh, the biggest mission that we have as a church outside Ghana is the United, United States. States. And then we wait until October. Be, be too long, too long. Uh, to <laughs> be a kind of disrespect to the people. So I decided that let's come in March. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I've seen that it was good that I came. Uh, I loved every bit of whatever I saw. And I see the enthusiasm of the people that want to do something for, for God. Uh, the members traveling long distances to come and meet him simply means that they love God and they love the church and all that. Great, taking pictures <laughs> with me and all that. And so I was very excited. In fact, I want to thank God for the life of the church in the U.S. We want to bless God for the national health's life. We want to bless God for the pastor's life. I see a lot of commitment on their part and the officership. Superb, superb. 2,857 of them the commitment to their, their staff at the national office. I think everyone is doing his part. And I think that the foundation of the Church of Pentecost is a solid one. Solid one. Yeah, solid, solid one. one. And you see it reflecting uh, in all the states all the where states. we went. And so, uh, kudos to <laughs> the church in, in the United States. We pray that you keep on keeping on, do your best, and God will breathe upon your efforts and turn it great. God bless the church in the United States. Should we relocate you here? Oh, no. no. <laughs> I love Ghana. We love <laughs> I know it's unfortunate that the snow met you at the airport. That's, that's how the nature of this place is. Yeah, but it was an experience. I think that I, I loved it. Uh, I've never gone out of uh, Ghana. Maybe traveled outside the country to meet such snow. snow. So, to me, uh, to be on my CV. <laughs> yeah, it was a good experience. And so it wasn't that bad, and the people have prepared warm clothes for us, so we didn't feel it. Well, thank you very much for joining us in the studios of COP USA Radio and Pent TV as well. Well, that was the chairman for the Church of Pentecostal Worldwide. I was privileged and I'm privileged. See you some other time. Bye. Thank you.